with us. You're <laughs> often one of our, our wonderful guests, and here he is co-anchoring along with us today. I don't even know what a bomb cyclone is, but I guess we're going to learn about that today. First of all, thank you for having me. It's yeah. great to be working with you, Katrina, and I have no clue what a bomb cyclone is. But I guess something tells me Mike Masco is, is going to tell us that, but I'm thinking oh, for all those getting a white Christmas, uh, I'm excited. I'm still crossing my fingers that we might get a little here in New York City. It does we'll make see. it beautiful and special. It really does. It does. So we turn now to President Zelensky's speech to Congress last night. In a message to the bipartisan group, Zelensky said that U.S. support is crucial, not for you, just for Ukrainian victory, but also, and I quote, an investment in democracy. This is showing Russia and China that no one can break national borders. He also had this to say about Americans and our money. Ukraine never asked the American soldiers to fight on our land instead of us. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Well, however, some people uh, were concerned, specifically some people in Congress were concerned about how much money we're still sending to Ukraine. Now, in a video posted after Zelensky's speech, Congressman Lauren Boebert offered her condolences to the Ukrainian people, but still had one question left unanswered. What I didn't hear tonight was a clear explanation of where the first $50 billion we sent to support their efforts went. Until Congress receives a full audit on where our money has already gone, I will not support sending additional money to this war. President Zelensky is working to protect his country, his border, and his people. I get it. I really just wish our commander in chief would do the same right here at home and secure our southern border and protect our people. Powerful words from the congresswoman. Here with, with his thoughts on President Zelensky's speech, former CIA officer and CEO of Portman Square Group, Mike Baker. Mike, welcome to the show. Sure, thank you. All right, Mike, first and foremost, what, was, what, what stood out to you uh, in, in Zelensky's, uh, I'll say, very powerful speech? I mean, he's very charismatic. I mean, there were moments of laughter. It was a very intense speech. But what was your takeaway? Yeah, look, uh, from the very beginning of this conflict, you know, Zelensky has done a very good job of framing the narrative and kind of seizing the, the high ground within media, social media. And that's been critically important because he's, he's had to rally sort of the support of the U.S. and all our allies, NATO, obviously. Um, I think some of the things that, that stood out are, look, we, we can multitask. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating that the, the Democrats now consist of so many war hawks. Uh, who claim that if you if you ask any questions uh, about the funding or the important questions of where is this going and and what's eventually going to happen, then you're basically you know Putin's puppet. So they've they've kind of tried to shut down any any argument, which is interesting. We can we can multitask. We can do both things. We can be behind and support uh, the Ukrainians in this uh, in this war against Russia, and we can also and we should be asking the bigger questions. We should be having these conversations in Capitol Hill. Unfortunately, well, frankly, we don't send, to be honest, our best and brightest to Capitol Hill. So I, I'm not holding out a lot of hope that we're going to have important conversations that, to be honest, we should have any time we're engaged in this. Now, our boots are on the ground, but we are as close as you can get to a proxy war <laughs> against Russia. And so when we send Patriot systems or any, any military gear and resources into the country, there is nothing wrong with at the same time asking, and the Pentagon should have an immediate accounting, right? If you say, where is that, as, as the Congresswoman said, where is the fifth, first 50 billion gone? Well, the Pentagon should have that at its fingertips, right? We should be able to have those conversations just like they should sit and say, okay, what are the various scenarios here? Where is this leading to? How bad could this get? How long could this go on for? Because that's what smart people do when you're devoting this sort of resource and national security concern to an event like this. Those, those are great points, Mike. Let me just ask you this. What do you think Zelensky missed? Did he miss anything in the speech? What could he have said that he didn't say? No, I, I think, you know, he's, he really covered the topics. Again, as you pointed out, he's very good at this. He's very charismatic. He, he understands uh, the audience that he's playing to. And so I think, if, if anything, what he and the administration should be doing right now uh, are looking at the issues of peace, right? Now, you know, do we think that this will go on forever, right? Well, Putin has come out and said, yeah, this is going to be a very long 
long conflict. He's still calling it a military operation. Uh, but he looks at us providing them with, with the first of the Patriot systems. And in his mind, he says, OK, we're digging our heels in. Putin and his cronies don't process information and respond the way that we in the West would. And we sometimes keep forgetting that. Right. So we need to be having a very serious conversation. If we're going to be in this for the long haul and that long haul is way off in the distance and we can't even see it, then we should have that conversation so that we're all on board with the idea and that there's no misunderstandings here about what the long term costs are going to be to us, to importantly, to the Ukrainian people. Yeah, Mike, uh, you know, Zelensky and uh, President Biden uh, reportedly spoke at length about Ukraine's suggestions for how to end this war. Of course, lots of curiosity about what the details were in that conversation. What do you, what do you think they might be? Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's put himself in this interesting situation. Zelensky has said, look, we, you know, the first step is, is Russian troop withdrawal. And basically he's saying from all Ukrainian territory. Now, I think we need to be very pragmatic here and understand that the Russians are never going to give up their only port for the Black Sea Fleet. They're never going to give up Crimea. Um, and so we need to be very pragmatic in this. It doesn't mean that we give in. It's not, again, this, this ridiculous uh, posturing on the part of, of some on the left who say, well, if you talk about what are the various potential peace settlements, then you're just playing into Putin's hands. You're just a Putin puppet. Well, no, that's not how it works. Again, we can do both. You can fully support and you can be pragmatic and look at what is the eventual outcome. But we have to be clear about this. The idea that somehow the Russian troops are going to magically disappear from all of Ukrainian territory because nobody cared. Let's be clear. Nobody cared for years that the Russians had troops in eastern Ukraine and had uh, taken over Crimea. Nobody in the West really cared. There were people in the U.S. putting flags, Ukrainian flags in their front yards and talking about how they stand with the Ukrainian people. So I, we, we all have to take a breath, be pragmatic, and think about what are we doing and how long is this going to go on for and what are the potential scenarios that lead to an eventual Peace. Yeah, uh, great points, points Mike. And, and of course, you know, a war that that nobody thought would go on this long. But again, yeah. continuing straight into the new year. Uh, Mike Baker, always also bringing it not with just the insight, but the awesome personal <laughs> style. Merry Christmas and thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you.